Okay, so Peter, I want to re-pick up on this question, but uh, you're planning on a range internally, which makes sense, from 50 to $90 a barrel, but we're not even in the full stages of recovery. Should we be hovering around $90 a barrel? It almost seems a bit excessive, or is this the new normal? There will be a lot of supply coming on stream mode the next uh, few years, and we have still OPEC production shut in. But on the other side, you're right, quite clearly India and China are driving the demand side. So I think it's a little bit too early to say what's the, the new norm. But I think OPEC is calculating 70 to 90, and we are 50 to 90, and I think that's the range where I see it long term. Uh, $100 a barrel in 2012 when we see a full stage recovery is unrealistic then is what you're saying? No, I'm not saying it's unrealistic. I think it can happen, but that's not the way we look at uh, long-term forecasts in, in our business. But it can happen depending really on how fast the recovery will go in these energy-hungry uh, emerging markets at this stage. It's fascinating. During the recession, you really revved up spending, uh, $30 billion of capital mm -hmm. investment, to be ready for the recovery. How has that positioned you now in terms of additional production coming online? It positioned us very well. We will actually have uh, 13 projects coming on stream in 2010 and 11, which delivers us 11% growth if you compare it to 2009 in terms of production. So we are really going into the harvesting period now, mm. which uh, positions us well actually to deliver into a demand growth which is going to come. What are the new frontiers for you where you're looking? Because it's sometimes more expensive to go into Brazil, offshore West Africa, the Kashagan field in Kazakhstan, which is a challenge but a gigantic field. Where else are you looking right now for new finds? Uh, for new finds, I would say Australia is key for us. We had very good exploration success there. In the Gulf of Mexico, we had good uh, exploration success. And obviously, you mentioned uh, some areas, but Qatar for us is very important. We have two major projects coming on stream there. So we are concentrating at the moment across the world in five to six countries, and we have got good prospects there. Now, there's an interesting trend emerging in the business right now. The international oil companies, such as yourself or an ExxonMobil, and the national oil companies like a Petronas, Petrobras, uh, Sunuk, PetroChina, the major players, Qatar Petroleum. Mm -hmm. When do we get at the point that national oil companies will compete head-to-head -head with you? Right now they're, they're partners, but when are they going to nudge you out because they have their own cash? Yeah, I think they are partners on the one side, but they're already competitors today, and uh, that's fine. We are used to compete in the market, so uh, through our technology innovation, through our brand, we can compete. But we also have more than 20 of those partnerships already, some very... Um, international partnerships as well and this has been part of our business model for the last 20 years so I think it is what it is and we will just deal with it. But in, in time uh, do they partner with a Schlumberger and a Halliburton on oil services get that technology expertise and perhaps they don't need a shell is it going to be that way in 10-15 years in your view? No absolutely not because uh, technology and innovation is a key field for, for a company like Shell that's where we can actually uh, differentiate against the competitors. It's the personal, so the people, which are quite important. And I think the national oil companies are looking for our skills uh, and used uh, the ones, the service companies you have mentioned, for, for other work. But there is clearly a, an area where we can deliver value. Okay, final question. You're in Iraq right now. Everybody's had to stay out of Iran. How do you plan eventually for such a, a huge market with a huge natural gas uh, reserve field and also oil fields? Yeah, I think in the very long term in Iran, we expect Iran to, do, to be part of the, the world community and uh, that we have access to those resources. Um, we, will, we have been in Iran for quite a while. We are not at the moment because of the sanctions. But I do have an optimistic view that over time this will, uh, they will come back into the world community and then we can develop those resources together with the Iranians. As we do now with the Iraqis, we are in two big projects there and the world will need the oil and the gas and I think we should actually be capable and able to develop them. Three to five years? What's the timeline that's realistic? Oh, um, um, I think that's difficult to say. This is geopolitical and uh, it's, I would not speculate at this stage. So. Good. Nice to have you. Yeah. Thank you. Terrific for having me.